This video is about how I got my classes to auto load using the PSR4 standard and Composer's auto loader. All right, I'm going to explain this by going through how any one of my normal scripts would run. In other words, by running a script in my web directory. Okay, here is my web directory. I have a script called join. First of all, I switched over to using namespaces. So in this script, I use the class log action because I create a new log action object here. So this is what it looks like when you have a use statement, which allows me to have the word log action here without having to prefix it with all of this. Next, over here, I include my initialization script. So let's see what that does. It's in the app folder. It's called, I gave it this name. This script also uses a class called session down here. So I did the same thing using the use statement. Then on this line, I include composers autoloader, which is located in vendor right here. So what does the script do next? Well, down here, I load another autoloader, but this one, I'm not going to be using it anymore, but I have it here in case I need it for any of my old classes. The old classes are in the includes folder. So where does the autoloader load the classes from? Well, it loads them from my app folder in SR Labib, and it basically uses this path thing uh, to find them. And actually the autoloader is what helps it find it. The other thing, let me close this so we're not distracted, is that this is how I configured my, let me close this, composer.json. I have this entry here, which basically tells it how, it basically tells Composer how to load my namespaced classes. It tells it for the vendor code course, for example, and that's, um, you know, the guy on YouTube, he has very good videos. His channel is called Code Course. So his vendor name is Code Course. My vendor name is Asar Labib. So this basically configures Composer so that it will, when it sees this vendor name in a fully qualified namespace for a class, it will use the app Asar Labib folder. The next thing that has to be done in order for this to work, besides configuring composer.json, is, and I'm going to get my terminal here. First, I have to be SSH'd into my virtual machine. And then I have to be in the directory for the project. And then I would run this command, composer dump autoload with a dash O for optimize. There's no harm in running it one more time. And basically, it'll tell me generating optimized autoload files. So it used the composer.json configuration, which I just showed you. And then it modifies its autoloader in order to be able to autoload my classes. That pretty much covers the changes I've made. There's one thing I want to point out while I'm still in my virtual machine. Okay, let me go to my home directory. Let me show you dot bash RC. I added this line. Now, although this is an environment or configuration variable for composer, because composer runs from the command line, it also reads the environment variables in the shell. So I placed this configuration so that I wouldn't get the warning telling me the X debug, the fact that I'm running it is slowing down composer. Okay, I don't care if it's slowing it down. So that's one more configuration I did. And by the way, this command over here, 
has to be run every time I change my composer.json in order to add another vendor directory. And speaking of vendor directories, it's important to look at the, the, the structure here. Oh, I haven't even shown you what an actual class file looks like where you define the class. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And because it has this namespace, the file structure looks like this. And then, obviously, I had to put this in my JSON file. So that's it for this video.